Of all the natural resources in New Mexico, there's only one that can support life. The University of New Mexico proudly presents a Center for Regional Studies film production of an extraordinary documentary event that honors New Mexico's acequia culture. It's really a sacred heritage, no? It's been around for more than 400 years. Acequias endured for many generations out of the sheer necessity that we had to feed ourselves. It was survival. When the Espanoles came, they observed irrigation in place by some of the Pueblos, and they marveled at the system and how it functioned. Their goal was a much larger scale. When they dug an acequia, they were creating an artificial stream what were relatively narrow ribbons of water and plants in our very arid landscape, they created these lush, broad valleys. They set up acequias to see if it was viable to inhabit a certain place. This landscape is green because of the acequias. It's not naturally green, it's culturally green. That's what we've been doing here for over 400 years, is bringing the water to our communities. We lived in a forest of fruit-bearing trees. If you can imagine the richness of that ecosystem, that was a paradise. This is not some primitive, kind of folksy, quaint system, you know, digging ditches. It's actually really part of a changing and dynamic world. There are approximately 700 acequias in the state. They're not museum pieces. They serve a purpose. For example, Rio Riba County has $18 million. It's coming into the economy because of agriculture. In Mora County, it's almost $12 million. The Asequias provide an example for what is resiliency in uncertain times. Climate change is a major challenge for us. The droughts of the future are going to be more severe. We're amongst the thirstiest of all the states. We are the second driest state in the nation. Every plan is for Albuquerque to grow, for Santa Fe to grow. That means drilling more wells into more aquifers. It means getting water, however you can get it. We're going to kill the goose that laid the golden egg. That's what makes our water so precious and that we have to be so vigilant about protecting. The pressures are mounting. We're going to have to be prepared. That is what the acequias are facing. They can't last without a real philosophical, ideological change in the attitude of all of us. There is a deep need for there to be a movement around acequias, and we have a movement. The acequias have demonstrated a resilience through organizing, whether it was the coming of the Americans, the coming of resort development, urbanization, water rights transfers, people have mobilized to hold on to what they have. It's about the acequia system being protected by people of knowledge, people of the land, of traditional areas. As long as we don't, don't allow our consciousness no, to get dark, then yes, the acequias will survive. We have people in communities across the state of New Mexico and in positions of power who recognize our ecology, our food systems, our livelihoods, our happiness, our aesthetics. It has to come down to faith and it has to come down to hope. We are going to persevere from this and we are all going to come together and understand what's truly important is these gifts of nature, these gifts of culture. The acequias are part of the fabric of our land and of our communities. If you let them die, a lot of other things will die with them. If you want to keep that lifeblood flowing, well, it flows in the acequias. <laughs>